So I took like a close up of the sound devices mix pretend here just to show like a few things. For example, the turn on and off switch is on the left side. Like the first time I had it in my hands, I had a hard time finding it because usually it is um, like on most of the recorders, this is a, a switch that it's like on the front panel and you can easily find it. So here was a little bit tricky, but you already know what it is. <laughs> this recorder has a touch screen to set up all the parameters here where you see it. Then, uh, like if you press here, then you can uh, rename uh, like the project or the channel and each stuff. If you press here, you can choose which view of the levels you want to have. And here in the three lines, you go into the menu and then the rest of the menu, it's also the same. You can like just everything touch and go inside and select. It has a joystick, this one here that it's also a little bit different than from most of the recorders. You have to press it up, like, yeah, push it up to start the recording. In most of the other, like, uh, recorders that I know, there is a button, a knob for rec, and you just press it. So here is with the joystick, you have to go up to start recording. You press the joystick to stop the recording, down to play it, here for reverse and fast forward. And this color ring about around the joystick, it shows you also like in red, it, it shows that you are recording in this moment. And if it's green, then it shows that you are playing a file that you already recorded. So it gives you like also uh, a hint to let you know if you are actually like recording or not. The headphone output is on the right of the recorder. And this is the knob that you will use to adjust the headphones volume, but as well like to make all of, many, all of the menu selections or even write metadata. You don't have to go like here, if you want to write, for example, the name of the channel, the, here comes like all the letters. You don't have to go there with your finger and try to put like the, the names because fingers are very big in comparison to, to the size of these small letters, but uh, you can like do everything with this knob here on the right. So now we go to the microphones. Maybe we are not going to be confronted with them in our everyday like uh, educational videos, but it's very important for me also like that you have like an idea of what kinds are there and uh, that like if you see or if you have any of these on your hands that you actually know a little bit about them. So um, a microphone is the device that transforms sound waves into an electrical signal. There are some classification. There are the dynamic microphones and the condenser microphones. I'm not going to go into the science of this. If you want to know like what's the difference, how they are built and how it works uh, in turn, I totally recommend you to visit Neumann. Like it's also here on the presentation down there. They are like uh, absolute professional, high level uh, microphone manufacturers and they know what they're talking about. And they also explain it like in a nice way that you can actually like understand. So if you want to know more, go and visit their website. The dynamic microphones, they fall into categories, moving coil and ribbon microphones. Yes ribbon microphones are dynamic. I couldn't believe it either. So the moving coil microphones are not very sensitive to all frequencies. They need more sound pressure like to get the signal. They are very sturdy and durable, resistant to distortion and to everything, literally like to explosions, to earthquakes, to whatever happens, they are going to survive and they will keep working no matter what. So that's why these microphones are the most loved ones like to use on stage, like in live sound, in concerts. And um, because it's like, yeah, they might get bumped or like uh, thrown on the floor or whatever, and they will still work. They don't need phantom power and they are great for sound sources with high sound pressure like especially vocals, uh, guitar amplifiers, percussion, brass, like whatever that has like high pressure. A very important note on this, 
on the practical world <laughs> when you are like in a, in a studio or when you are uh, on stage like working uh, in sound for a concert when they refer to dynamic microphones they refer only to this category moving coil microphones ribbon microphones are treated as a separated category that has like nothing to do with it but just so you know the most common dynamic microphones for decades like really all times it's the Shure SM58 that's very popular for vocals like like really since many many years you can see every singer like singing with it or with the 58 beta that is like the more new uh, version there's also the Shure SM57 it's suitable for anything that you want to record but it's most popular for guitar amps guitar amplifiers and snare drums it's like but you will always see it every studio has a couple of these then there's the Sennheiser MD421 that is also like suitable for everything it's very popular for drums for toms on the drum set there is the Electro Voice RE20 that is also very popular uh, for broadcasting because uh, it has like a very flat response and um, uh, in the music you can also use it for floor toms for example even in the kick drum like you can experiment a little bit like uh, where you want to use it with which instrument and uh, yeah just experiment and find out how you like it and there is the Shure SM7B that is very 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 popular right now because that's one of the most loved microphones for podcast for broadcasting for youtubers for how to videos is like they are like really going for this microphone now because it gives like a very warm sound direct and warm and uh, also like singers like it because of this and they it has like a bass roll off so it's a little bit more bassy the ribbon microphones on the other side they are extremely sensitive and extremely fragile and delicate it's the opposite from the moving coil they are like really to be treated like i don't know like with <laughs> pinces <laughs> they don't need phantom power and they can easily get damaged from the phantom power if you apply them to the original ones like nowadays there are like new series of uh, ribbon microphones that work with phantom power but um yeah like if you go to the classic old ones you will destroy them so don't do that um, they have a natural bi-directional polar pattern that means they capture sound from the front and from the back this uh, thanks like to the way that they work in turn and they have a limited treble response and uh, that makes them that uh, like their sound is not so bright but that gives also like a very characteristic sound that people like also in studios when they go to to record for example jazz or to have like some vintage sound that yeah like people take them for these reasons the other category are the condenser microphones and uh, also called capacitor microphones these microphones have definitely superior sound quality they are extremely sensitive they really hear everything <laughs> uh, and they have a way wider frequency response than the dynamic microphones they are delicate they are not as sturdy as the other ones and they are susceptible to distortion so you gotta go a little bit more careful with this category they do require phantom power they are preferred for studio recording more than live because like in concerts they might be used sometimes but since they are so sensitive then it's more likely to get feedback like this beep, that sounds very loud in the concerts that we don't like these microphones are more um, susceptible to generate that kind of noise they are perfect for capturing vocal or instrumental nuances like every detail of, of, of any instrument or a singer that you want to record it's going to be captured with these ones 
is recommended for all kinds of instruments as long as not directly exposed to high sound pressure levels because they are delicate. So yeah, you can use it for everything, especially like in controlled conditions like studio recording. In the condenser microphones, like they are also like classified in large diaphragm uh, or membrane versus small diaphragm or membrane. <laughs> they have big differences like in the way they sound and that's why exactly people choose one or the other one to make the recording. In the large diaphragm, these microphones, they don't have a very consistent pickup of polar pattern. That means that uh, usually if they are cardioids, they, they can get uh, sound from the front. But especially in the low frequencies, like bass and everything, it kind of gets uh, like sound from all directions. But this makes these microphones shape the sound in a very pleasant way that people like and that's why they are chosen. They make the sound appear vibrant, rich and larger than life. Like you are directly inside a, a music record if you are singing in front of one of these microphones. They are special for vocals, spoken word and solo instruments and especially like to put them into the spotlight. Like the instrument or the singer that you have in front of this kind of microphones. I mean, it's not going to do magic, <laughs> but uh, it's going to sound uh, special like right away. On the other side, the small diaphragm microphones, they look usually like a pen or like a lipstick. They have a very consistent pickup pattern, like in all frequencies from lows to highs. They have a very pure, natural and neutral sound. They have an excellent transient response that is like depending on how, how hard the, the attack of an instrument is. They have an extended high frequency response. That's why they listen to really every single detail, to harmonics, to everything that an instrument can produce. And they can be used for almost anything because they have like this very flat response. In pop, for example, they are usually used for pianos, acoustic guitars, strings, overheads on the drum set or the hi-hat or the cymbals. And they are also very used for orchestra recordings in stereo or surround and choirs and ensembles. Like you will find them everywhere, like in all kinds of recordings. They are very, very, very loved. The most common condenser microphones are like the Neumann TLM 103. It's very, very popular for vocals, for singing, for talking, for audiobooks or um, that kind of stuff. There is the AKG C414. It's also like suitable for everything. You can use it in any instrument and it will also like sound very nice. They are both big diaphragm microphones, large. This is also mostly used for vocals, but it's also used for pianos and strings. And uh, it has also like you can change the polar pattern. That means that you can choose if it uh, captures sound only from the front or from both sides or from all around. And uh, the other one, very common condenser microphone, also very good quality is Neumann KM184. It's a popular uh, microphone for overheads on the drum set. They come also like in match pairs, very used for stereo recordings or for surround recordings from pianos, strings, woodwinds, brass, orchestra in general. They are definitely perfect for this kind of recordings for capturing like a very natural and neutral sound. The shotgun microphones, most of them are also condenser microphones but also because we want in our video <laughs> to like to hear also like everything that happens uh, on the set or that the person says. So they are also part of this category. A shotgun microphone is a highly directional microphone thanks to its long interference tube that like they are like very long. 
and the construction, the way they are constructed, it makes that it rejects very good all the sounds that come from from the sides, and like it really focuses on the on the sound that comes only from the front. Usually, it's mounted on a boom pole or a boom arm. Here comes also like another golden rule: the microphone has to be as close to the talent as possible. Now we are talking already like in our video world, so just try to be as close as possible to the talent, just some centimeters out of the camera frame, but not higher, just right there. These are like super cardioid or hyper cardioid polar pattern. That means like very, very directional to the front, but it also like captures a little bit on the back. They are very sensitive to the pointing direction and very rejecting of off-axis sound and noise. And they capture a true representation of the sound. That's why, like, from all the possibilities that we have for recording um, audio for videos, this is, like, the most uh, loved option. There are the lavalier microphones, also known as lapel mics, lav or clip mics. Uh, it's miniature microphones, and uh, they are usually, like, placed on the talent's body, like, either out, uh, like, to be seen or hidden. There are mostly condenser types out there. Usually they are used with a wireless system of transmitter and receiver. There are also other ones that are wired. That means that they go directly like connected to the smartphone. Nowadays, there are also like good solutions for sound for smartphones. So you can like plug them directly there or directly to the camera. Most of the cameras also have like the uh, microphone input. As I said, those are not the best preamps. So I would go for our professional solution uh, with the wireless system of transmitter and receiver. They get the power that they need from the transmitter. And they are also like in these two different polar patterns. The cardioids, the, the ones that only like capture sound from the front. These ones are ideal for all live scenarios, like live lectures and presentation, broadcast educational videos and news, because it reduces the audience noise or the, in general or the background noise that you can have around. But it needs to be pointed directly to the mouth, like, like when you mount it here, I don't know if you see me, but like it really needs like to be pointing to your mouth. If you use the omnidirectional, then of course they will get sound from all around, from the top, from the bottom, from all the sides around. So it's not so important how you place it. And it's mostly used in film or videos where the talent gets more active. In many of our educational videos, like the person that is talking in front of the camera also is moving like around the room to show something here, something there. So it's better to have this one. So when people are moving <laughs> around that you still like can have a good sound. And for example, like in many situations, like uh, your talent, for example, has like a, a shirt with a collar. Yeah. And sometimes like the microphone is hidden here under the collar. Yeah. So if you have like a cardioid microphone that needs to be pointed directly to the mouth and it's pointing like this, look what you will be getting, like nothing, really. So if you are going to hide the microphone, for example, under the collar, you have to be sure you are using an omnidirectional lavalier. So that's still like from the side is going to get like good sound from from the mouth. Because otherwise, like, you won't have any good sound there. So make sure you have the right polar pattern that you will need for every situation. Some recommendations when working with lavalier microphones. Always power up and test your microphone and your set, like a transmitter and receiver, before rigging them on the talent. Because it will be very annoying like to always go there. Oh, I forgot to turn the micro the, the transmitter on or something and then you will have to always go back to to your talent and like disturb him or her. And so make sure that you have everything set up before you go to rig him. Use fresh loaded batteries at the start of the shooting or of the event in case that you are uh, using wireless system that need double A batteries. Don't hide the microphone if you don't need to. In the applications that 
we usually work, where it's corporate interviews or interviews for a documentary or these educational videos or, for example, in the news. It's very, very, very important to have very good and clear sound. And the audience don't care if they see the microphone. It's like... Yeah, I mean, that's the way they capture the sound. So it's better to see the microphone and have a good sound than to try to hide the microphone and maybe not get the best sound that you could. Before you put the microphone on the talent, look at the clothes that they are wearing and determine where to mount the microphone, depending like uh, if they are wearing like a shirt, then with buttons, then of course it's going to be easy. If you have like the tie pin, then you can go like directly on the shirt or if this is a blues of, of a woman, then you can also go there. If it's a blazer, then you can also like easily like tie the, the microphone in any of the sides. And uh, that's the next point. Like think about which side your talent will likely turn during the recording or the event and place the microphone on that lapel. Because, for example, here, like I'm talking to you and my presentation is in front of me, <laughs> I mean, but uh, if I was going to be somebody here and my presentation is here on the left, then I might be turning all the time, like to explain you something uh, like this, you see? When I turn, you lose me a little bit. Then if you put it, place the lavalier, like on the other side, then even so it's uh, omnidirectional, then it's more likely like to lose a person, then think about, okay, it will turn mostly to this direction because the presentation is there. I mean, sometimes you cannot say it since the beginning. Maybe it's a person that is going to be walking like in front of blackboard and then it could be talking from any of those sides. So yeah, for this purpose, it's also like better to have it like in the as, as much in, in the middle as you can. If the person is, for example, wearing like this, uh, like a sweater or a t-shirt, then of course it's more difficult like to try, like if you put the tie, like the pin, it won't look so good. <laughs> so usually there are like also other ways that come like sometimes with concealers or little things, or you can just like find a way to, to tape it like inside, like around the collar, for example, here and there, or like, I usually like put it like from, from the bottom below the t-shirt and then I just like paste it here, like right before the, this, this little color here. But anyways, like there are many, many different ways to find the best uh, option to put the microphone on your talent. I was also visiting the website from Audio Technica and they even explain how you have to go like with the cable around and make a loop and like put it under the blazer and grab the cable. So <laughs> I totally also recommend you like to, to watch some of these videos to learn some techniques on what are good ideas like to wiring a person to rig in a lavalier on your talent. There are also like other websites where you can definitely find others, like for example, tricks to hide them, but still don't have any rustle or something like that. Don't leave the cable loose because uh, that could cause like handling noises. So try like to either to like grab it also like with your pin or like you can like uh, paste it with this surgical tape that it won't destroy it, like uh, Either the skin or the clothes is like a soft tape that still like pays very good. And place the transmitter on the belt, a pocket or a waistband. Like uh, it needs to be a place where it's going to be sure that you know that it's not going to easily fall out because uh, that's like something very bad. If the cable of the microphone like suddenly like rips, you know, like if, if it's just like phew, then that's not good for the microphone at all. And of course, we also don't want the transmitter to be like falling on the floor. So always like look for a place where it, where you are sure that it's going to be stable, like on the belt, or sometimes when they have blazers, they have like internal pockets also where you can put it. If it's a, a woman, then sometimes it's also difficult when they are wearing a dress or a blouse, then there's also like these waistbands that come also for it that have like a little pocket inside for the transmitter. And then like you just put this this uh, band like under the, the shirt that they are wearing the blouse and then like you are sure that uh, your transmitter is safe. 
some common wireless systems that are out there. It's like the Sennheiser uh, AVX MKE2 set. They are very common uh, in this video filmmaking industry because they are very easy to use. They have auto frequency management. That means you don't have to go and look for any frequency. You just have to turn them on and they work. <laughs> you don't have to worry about the frequency or if a frequency it's already taken for any other reason, then they rescan automatically and find the next one. Now you cannot decide, like you cannot manipulate or control the frequency. It happens from alone, from yeah, from itself. So it's good and bad. <laughs> They also make automatic pairing, so you just have to press the button where it says pair. I think like it's this small here, it says pair, and here there's also the one, so they just find each other and they blink green and then you're good to go. They have automatic input and output levels, but you can also control them like from these little stripes, like uh, f when the four are like uh, glowing green, then you have like all the level and then like if you want to go less level then you press here and then it's one line less and so on. I don't know exactly how many dBs less is one line but yeah that's uh, the way you have like to manipulate it has like then four different uh, loudness levels. And it operates via supplied battery pack. This part here on the bottom that's the battery of the receiver and this part on the bottom is the battery of the transmitter. These are USB charge batteries that it's good of course because you are not like wasting so much uh, AA batteries but you have to always like remember that you have to charge them and maybe it's also good to already have like a spare battery pack from each because sometimes they might run out in the middle of your shooting. <laughs> So just like be prepared to have enough of this kind of batteries as well. This other set is uh, one of the most common sets uh, that you will find out there for any other, yeah, like filmmaking scenario and also like broadcasting and also for corporate interviews, like everybody used to have this before this. <laughs> this has been like on the market many more years, of course. And uh, does the Sennheiser, like this picture is the EW100 G3, but they are already in G4 and there are also like different generations. Here you have to manually scan for frequencies, but like you have like to press a button and then they start scanning by themselves until they find like a free frequency there that they can use. The sensitivity level, that means like how loud they are going to be sending the signal. Uh, you have to set it on the transmitter itself. I usually leave them at around minus 15. That's usually like for a person that speaks in a normal level, it's usually like a good level. That is what you can set on the transmitter. The AF output level It's on the receiver. That's the one that you have connected to the recorder. Usually it has to be by zero it's like the ideal scenario so that you can still like manipulate if you uh, have a lack of um, gain on the microphone that you can still like go upper they work with double a batteries most of us working out there we work with Eno loop rechargeable batteries those are like very very professional they can definitely stand all day long without the need to be replaced so you don't have to go to your talent every time like, oh, I have to change batteries again because, um, yeah, I mean, the transmitter is always on your talent's body. <laughs> so the less that you have to go and bother your protagonist, the better for everybody. So, yeah, those are very good batteries and you are not wasting like normal. If you use like non rechargeable batteries, you're going to be wasting a lot and I also don't find it good for the environment <laughs> and for the pocket or, or of any production like for a long time. Now we come to the headphones. Headphones are mini speakers which you wear over or inside your ears so that you can listen to sound without anyone else hearing. Theoretically, if you listen to your music or whatever too loud, then of course your neighbor is also going to be able to, to hear what you're hearing. 
there are also many different kinds of uh, headphones there and sizes. And if they are like this in the pictures, like that co or the ones that I'm uh, wearing today, like they totally cover your ear, but there are the other ones that everybody knows uh, from that usually come with um, cell phones out there also like very small that go inside in ears and that kind of stuff. So I will only talk about like the open back versions that allow outside noises and they are usually like open here like they have uh, like spaces here uh, so that you can also listen what is around you like the surroundings the environment and that's like a more natural way to listen and there are the closed back versions uh, that limit external sounds the ones in the pictures are closed these ones that i'm wearing are also closed i definitely recommend for the recordings to wear closed back headphones because that way you can listen better to the signal that you are recording because sometimes you don't know if what if, if you are working with open back headphones then you don't know if what you are listening is actually the sound that is outside or if it's like the noise that is disturbing you if it's actually getting also through the microphone and that you are also recording this sound. So if you are like using closed microphones, then you can listen better to what you are actually recording. And uh, you can also tell if we have to repeat something or not because the sound was not good or because it was a disturbing sound out there. So very, very, very important that not many people think about it. Set up a properly headphone level. That is very important. Because if you listen too loud, if your headphones volume is set too loud, then you will automatically tend to reduce the gain of your microphones until you listen to them at a comfortable level. But then the signal will be very, very, very low of your microphone. And then it will be almost like the same level that, than the noise floor. And then when you put the gain of the signal up later on the, your software, then you will also like be bringing up all this noise. So it's complicated. Like if you record too low, like to get uh, good levels afterward without noise, it's gonna be complicated. And on the other side, if you listen too quiet, too soft, then you will tend to give more and more gain to your microphones until you listen to uh, like a, a normal level, but they are going to be already like almost on the distortion level. So if you want to put a little bit more or if your silence suddenly gets louder, then you will be immediately on the distortion level. So that's why it's super, super important to set a properly headphone level how I usually do it and how I also recommend it <laughs> is to use the tone sound of uh, that m I think most of the professional field recorders out there have this function there. Maybe the H4N no because it's not a field recorder but most of the other ones they do. For example here I have in my this is the F4 from Zoom and here it has already like the little sign here, you can see it. So if you press this button, then it sends the this uh, scene signal uh, to all the channels and you will listen to it through your headphones. And then you just control here the volume of your headphones until you say, okay, this is a good volume that I find it it's okay to listen to this sound. That's like the one kilohertz uh, at minus 20 dB. So you say, mm -mm, okay, this is a good volume. I could hear to this all day long in this volume. <laughs> so, okay, you are set up and then you are also right to set up the gain of your microphones. In the Mix Pre 10, it doesn't have like an external knob like this one. You find it on the, when you go to the menu in the setup of the recording, you will find and it, it has this name, tone sound. And when you press it in the touch screen, then it will automatically start sounding. So you can control the gain of your headphones. And then when you are done, then you just press it again and then it disappears. So just a tip for everybody. <laughs> 